Welcome to The Real Recipe, the podcast that brings you the perfect blend of real estate trends and topics, where we serve up fresh insights and sizzling strategies. So let's get cooking. Welcome back. Welcome Welcome back. Welcome. Welcome Welcome back. (laughs) Can we we do a little bit of the... Uh, uh, But Mr. Mr. Cocktail will do that, not uh, Mace, but not the refix. No, you know, it's not better. All right, guys, welcome back to The Real Recipe Podcast. And today we're gonna discuss the mortgage process, how it plays a role in real estate transactions and the different products out there and what might be the right product for you depending on the type of real estate you're purchasing. Mm -hmm. And with us, who's always with us? Ryan. Ryan. It's cooking merit. Ryan, it's cooking merit. (laughs) Ryan, it's cooking merit. (laughs) So I'm I'm excited. We had some sizzle in the background. Absolutely, I'm excited for today though because (laughs) I am always interested in the different products that are out there. Yeah. As someone who wants to invest and is investing in real estate. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people know what they can do and how they can take advantage of certain products. They think I need to have all this capital. And in my opinion, there's people out there who don't have necessarily any capital and are using different loan products to build their portfolio. Yeah. Guys who are guys and, and ladies who have Really, not a lot of capital. And they have a nice portfolio bigger than mine. Yeah. And I'm like, how the hell are they doing it? Well, it falls, it falls into kind of, really falls into two categories, right? So you have people who, who hate financing, hate money, uh, and hate borrowing money, pay cash for everything. Which blows my mind. It, it, right, it's, it's weird. Other people's money. That's uh, yeah. kind of what I've uh, grown up Understand. Well, it's, it, uh, let, me, right. let me break it down into three categories. Okay? As an Italian. What? As an Italian. Yeah. As an Italian. Yeah, 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 as an Italian. Yeah. Other people's money. Yeah, yeah. We know you was on money. Yeah. <laughs> he's on speaks that, not you. Uh, that's broken to me. Right. So, let's get so it, it kind of breaks out into three categories, which would be, you know, yeah, cash buyers they don't pay cash for things. They don't, they don't like financing. They don't like paying costs or the expense of financing. And, and real quick, things. cash buyers are great in this market if yeah. you're getting into commercial because of the rates, right? So there's times when you need to be a cash buyer, and that's perfectly fine. So when you're buying commercial right now and a cap rate's five percent and your interest yeah. rate's seven, yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And you need yeah. to be a cash buyer in that, yeah. in that yeah. situation. Yeah. But I'm a firm believer in in borrowing money to build your portfolio. Yeah. yeah. Then then so then you have the the majority of the people who are successful in real estate. They understand the financing game and how it works and what they need to do. And you know they're obviously a more seasoned investor and, and kind of know what the you know the ins and outs of borrowing money and what they can and can't do. And then you have the people who are, who haven't really been in the game long. They hear about all these different, you know, nuanced products, you know, like, you know, like a fix and flip loan or, you know, and they can do all these, oh, I can borrow, I can get, you know, 80% of the acquisition, you know, so they only have to put 20% down to buy the property and then they'll finance 100% of the construction. Right. But they, but the problem there is that you know, they may not have all the relationships, but they need to do the construction. So they're paying retail for all this stuff. So you're, mm-hmm. your hundred thousand dollar in, in in renovations for a seasoned person is probably only fifty or sixty. You know, or are you going to go get dirty? You know, like yeah, I was telling, yeah, right. like I was telling you on on our on our flip, we and I buy, buy a flip. Like, I'll, I'll do the demo. Like, I, I'm I'm going to probably get getting dirty in there. I'll do that. I'll, I'll do whatever. I, you know, I, I think there's some people that don't want to do that or don't think that they should be doing the work. And, and I think it's in the weird. beginning. Might have to if yeah. you don't have those relationships. Right, if you yeah. have the time, you know. Yeah. And I think it's weird with financing because like, you run, you can run into scenarios where you know the last two or three years was really good, where you couldn't really screw it up. Mm-hmm. You know, you could buy the property, do the construction, you could pay retail, and you'd still get yeah. such a, so like much money, appreciation yeah. in the value over a short period of time that doesn't matter. It kind of masked your it, your your value. But not right now. Yeah. Yeah, now, as, as 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 things are leveling off and as are, things are starting to decline, now you're starting to see the cracks where you're starting to see, okay, you don't really know what you're doing. You 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 really need help and guidance, and that's the the main challenge right now for a lot of investors that are getting into real estate investing. They don't know where to go. Most of them will start out by going on the internet and they'll just Google investment property oh, loans. Money. Uh, yeah, like you know, it's saying. funny. Like that mm-hmm. that first one is to go to hard money. And it's not really hard money. It, it's it. 
you know, it, it scares them off as they go, they look at hard money and then they see the rates and then they're like, oh my God, you know, hard money loan is 12%. 12%, you know, but I'm, I'm paying down four points, you know, I'm paying four yeah, points three, up yeah. front. Yeah, hard money. So my like, closing costs are through the roof right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so, so it, it, gets, it gets really, really complicated. So, yeah. so then they'll say, okay, well, maybe I can go to my bank and then go to Chase or the TD Bank and then, and then that's it. And then, they, then after that, they kind of go into this vast wasteland of financing and then you start yeah. hearing all these all this noise and buzzwords and all these fancy things. Yep. And it, it's really interesting for me on the financing side to see that a lot of investors really don't have the there's a lot of tools out there, but they don't take the time to research what they're doing and try to really understand the investment that they're making, the money that they're putting out, and the financing that they can get to make it make it worthwhile for them. Yep. You know, and that's so that's where somebody like me comes in, where you know I can sit with them and talk to them about like you know what what they're trying what what are you what, really what, trying, what are you trying to do what's your right? what, what 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 are you buying what do you want to buy yeah and what's your goal with it. Yeah. All right, well, I want to buy this three family and it needs a lot of work. It's vacant and I want to buy and hold because I could get 3500 per unit as opposed to the 1750 that it's getting right now in the shape it's in. Yeah. Yeah. Or I want to flip it. Yeah. Cuz it's this the market and I can get a ton of money for it. So what's, you know, what's my product on that? Like what should I do there? Yeah. And and it's interesting right now cuz as rates have shot up the the Profitability on some of these things, the cash flow on some of these these properties really don't make much sense anymore. At least around here in the tri-state area, yeah. you know, you can go. I out think a lot of that has to do with the property tax for, for Jersey. Part of it, yeah. it's hard to cash flow on residential properties because the property tax is just through the roof in certain areas. You know what? It's hard to buy a look. People do it, but I feel like you buy a multifamily home in Essex County, you're you know, it could be two grand a month in just tax. Here, I'll, 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 let, me, let me dig into that for a second because there's, there's so, this is what I love about lending. There's so many different nooks and crannies yeah. to get into. Yeah, right? no, for sure. Um, here, here in New Jersey, it, it's, and you see it in other other uh, populated areas like, like New Jersey, um, you start getting first time investors who will go in and they'll, they'll they, they want the deal. They yeah. need to get a deal. Mm-hmm. So, like a guy like you and I'll come in and we'll go. Oh, I'm, I'm, I won't pay more than four twenty five for that, or okay. four four fifty for that. They'll come in and say, oh, five hundred, and they'll, they you know, think, think that they're gonna they're getting a deal. And there's, they're, you know, it's it's almost that that anticipation, and they, mm-hmm. they make make a stupid decision because they're trying to, to like scratch that. Edge. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. like I've got money to spend. And let me. Oh, the worst thing to do. Let me go get a deal. And so. I think over the last couple of years, as real estate investing has become a big thing, a lot of investors have just thrown thrown logic to the wayside and just said, "I need to deal." Yeah, yeah. You know, and and you know, like, and I've seen it blow up. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen investors even in today's market, investors still losing money. I had a uh, house on my block. I was walking the dog. I saw them just emptying out the house, and now I've been eyeing this house up for a while because yeah. it, it was vacant. Um, the people moved out, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, she was outside just like bulk pickup, like getting everything out there on the front lawn. I'm like, hey, yeah. are you guys looking to sell? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. If you know anything, you know, you know, know anyone, I was like, I'll make you an offer right now. And I walked through the house. So I took video, sent it to Mike. I was like, hey, what do you think? He was like, offer her this, no cash. Okay. On the spot, offer her. I think it was like 325. Yeah. It needed a lot of work. Like you walked in the kitchen and from the living room into the kitchen, like if I put a marble on the floor, it was oh, really? yeah. rolling yeah. down. Yeah. <clears throat> so there had, there, and, and it was coming with like building plans because she was eventually going to build on it. But then unfortunately, you know, her husband passed away and she had to move, whatever. She's like, yeah, that's way below what I want. Now this is in like the heart of the market in 2021. And I'm like, all right, like, my offer's there. It's there. It's not going anywhere. I live three houses down. You know where I'm at. I'm like, you let me know. And she like was, I think, insulted by the offer. Probably. And that's fine. You yeah, know, like, yeah. that's okay. Mm-hmm. But I'm not budging because I knew what the margins were. Mm-hmm. I knew what materials were costing. Mm-hmm. So whatever. So I think someone came in a hundred grand over <laughs> my offer. 
because I eventually pulled the deed because I saw someone starting to work on the property. I'm like, all right, whatever, no big yeah. deal. Yeah. Some of the, you know, sometimes the deals you don't get or the deals you turn away are the best deals, right? Um, and so they spent a hundred grand more than what I offered and the property sat on the market for, I don't know, 120 days. Yeah. And I think- In 2021. In 2021. In 2021. Because they then had to figure, okay, well, I bought it for 425. She, they probably put how much money into the house, yeah, and now they listed it for like 675. Yeah, they probably had what 150, 200 grand into it. Say 100 plus, 100 plus yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they just didn't do a good job. Yeah. They, 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 they painted everything outside the foundation. They painted black. Everything was like black and white, but it was all painted. Like nothing was yeah. replaced. The interior, you could tell, it was just like basics. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a great job. There was a lot of, and the other reason why our offer was so low is because there was a ton of mold sure. on the on the basement level. Yeah. So like we took that into account, remediation. Like I was like, look, you don't do anything. So if these people put in 100, 150, I think they ended up having to rent it. Yeah, I think that's who's in there now because I didn't I didn't see it uh, on the, you know, I didn't see a deal. Yeah. For, for the sale, so they never. So that's a that's a good example so, of how somebody would get into a really bad situation from a financing perspective, because they would they over, you know, the tendency over the last couple of years has been for people to overpay, you know, and you'll get, um, you'll get this. I'm sure you've seen it before, where everybody talks about, oh, you you start out buying a four family FHA, right? You put three and a half percent down, right? You know, and what people don't talk about is, you know, you're you're basically getting 100% financing to do that, which is fine, but you're, you're, you're between the mortgage insurance, the amount of property taxes, the interest rate, everything, mm -hmm. you barely make money on those deals. Right. Just because of everything that you're, you, that's a long, really long play to begin the cash flow on that property in a meaningful way. You know, you make cash flow like 100 bucks, 200 bucks, a couple hundred bucks, whatever. Right. But, you know, to really start seeing, significant cash flow, you have to be smart about what you're doing. Um, funny enough, my brother was, he's has a, has a lot of doors, and he uh, has been always cash. And, and I've always been telling him, dude, you gotta start using financing. Yeah. And I finally got him a crack, he did it last year. He bought a house not too far from him, paid, did, did financing on it. He did the construction himself, paid, paid the construction himself. but. He finally financed something. He didn't have to pay cash for it, and it wasn't a bad experience for him. And he's and you know afterwards he said to me, he's like, you know what? I'm glad I listened to you right. because I have the money to do other things now. Well, that's and, the thing. and he bought right. another piece of property simultaneously because right. an opportunity presented itself. And that's the thing, like you know, when you when when a lot of these investors pay cash, they they immediately shrink down their their opportunity because you can't maneuver when you pay cash right you know and and you can't just go and write a check off of the equity in your like home you, you have, have to, to go refinance it right refinance it cash or out. hopefully resell it yeah quickly yeah yeah and and so a lot of these a lot of these investors they don't realize that there are financing options available and there is at this moment in time there is more than likely there's a financing option for every solution or for every situation out there for for, right. for, for a client, right? The, the the challenge really becomes the equity and the amount of down payment that you need to come up with in order to do it. Right now, most commercial loans are gonna or most you know investment property loans, business purpose loans, they're gonna require at least twenty five percent down. Um, that's to get a a good deal. If you want to get a great deal and go to like a local bank and get really good financing from a local bank, um, you're talking probably thirty to thirty-five percent down. Right. Um, you know, so then you, then it, then you you have to look at that and say, all right, well, if I'm if I'm coming out of pocket cash, like, let's say I'm going to put down a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you know, but I'm going to generate, you know, net cash flow of of twelve thousand a year, a thousand dollars a month. You're making twelve percent on your money. That's mm -hmm. a good investment. That's right. not that's not terrible, right? right? You're not going to cry about that. Uh, it's a little bit on the lower side, but from a cash on cash perspective, that's a pretty good investment, and most people take that. You know, it's it's when you when you really start to size up your 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 investments and you look at bigger opportunity um, or future opportunity, 
is where you see a lot of the smarter guys going now and, and saying, okay, I can buy, you know, here's a property, uh, there's a property over in Apacon, not, not far from here. It's, uh, it's, it's challenging because it's commercial. Uh, you, you and I talked about this. It's a commer it has a commercial uh, zoning, but it's residential property. Okay. So that so immediate the, the, the garage thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that immediately creates some challenges from a financing perspective. But the future opportunity of that property oh, was, was yeah, we brought this home run. It was a two family house, but over the garage the owner had built like an office for himself. It wasn't so, an eagle. It was right. It was, <laughs> it was it wasn't some an challenges. But there. like Ryan and I were like, all right, well if this deal falls through, like put on yeah, the list. Yeah, maybe we'll go. Yeah, list. Like because now we've been through the whole process, we know what they're looking for. And the potential there is oh yeah because really, immediately I mean you have you already have the, the framing there you already have the structure there you just need to just run you know water and sewer out there you know and, and probably insulate and you got a you know a, a, probably a two or three bedroom apartment above the garage I mean so the home run and you'll get like two grand a month eighteen hundred a month for that was it was the office separate from the actual yeah, yeah, house itself yeah yeah I mean it was a good deal it was yeah. actually and, and the price point was was fantastic it would have been great great cash flow opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I think you're starting to see investors who are looking more down the line, looking for future, some of the smarter guys are looking for right. future. Yeah, not, not the immediate, okay, what's my immediate cash flow? It's, well, well wow, this, yeah, the this, old, this the property, old, is, yeah. I, could, I could do what with this property in two, three, four years? Yeah. You know, like, all right, as long as I'm breaking even or making a couple bucks on, on the current tenants right now and I'm not losing money on the deal, that's great. Mm -hmm. But even if I'm losing a little money, if I know yeah. like in, in two years, I can get a variance and do whatever I yeah. want with that particular area of the property. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's it. It really is challenging for investors who are getting started, and I, yeah. and I feel for them. You know, because they, they don't. They really don't. There's no. I mean, you can go to like you know some of the some of the other podcasts out there, or some um, uh, not podcasts, uh, some of the other websites out there, and you'll yeah. get information. But investors that are really looking to start, they really should spend time going through some educational courses or, or really spending time researching online all the different aspects of buying real estate mm -hmm. and investing in real estate and, and financing. Financing is not bad. No. You know, you, you know, if you get the right financing in place, you can leverage the amount of equity that you have, you know, two or three times what you can if you're just paying cash or something. So why not at least consider it? Yeah, rates are elevated right now, but rates are elevated right now and it's short term. It's not, you know, the rates aren't going to be elevated for 30 years. Right. You know, you're going to see, you know, we're, we're, we had a lot of loose monetary policy, which created low interest rates. And so now that's created, a, a, that created an opportunity for people to get really cheap money. Mm -hmm. But now as, as we have to right that ship, now rates have to come back up in order to, to yeah. compensate, right? It's just that from what I'm seeing yeah. on the residential stuff, yeah. the home values aren't reflecting what should be reflected with high interest rates. Yeah. Right. You have All the deals coming in, even though, look, even though there's no inventory and it's, it's slow, the deals that are coming in over my desk are yeah. oh, way above ask still. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now that the areas are very specific areas, yeah. they're more of the popular areas, but it's... I think that's still, an anomaly for New Jersey. I, you know, yeah, you go probably. Into like Pennsylvania or you go down south. Right. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're, yeah. You're seeing, there's, yeah. the market is softening. And I think, I think it's difficult to purchase in New Jersey. I think that, it's, it, like it's, yeah. Yes, I agree. But, and now when I bought my first house, my interest rate was over 6%. Yeah. So it, to, right. me, when this I, isn't, to me, when I see this, this now, new. everyone's, you know, yeah. crying about it. It's like, oh, well, I mean, I it think, just, it, well, it's, but I it's, think, but now think you have both. You have the inflation. Well, I was going to say, your price. home value reflected Absolutely. a 6.5% interest rate. Yes. When I, when I came out of college and I was working for a bank attorney in New York and I was working in the mortgage industry and I was doing a ton of refinances back in 2010 from all the people that, you know, mm -hmm. probably got screwed in 2008, right? 2007, 2008, 2009. Um, I was you know, they were refining into 5% loans because their rates were seven or six, yeah. Yeah. you know, so low in 2010 was like five and a half, five and a quarter, maybe high yeah. fours, or, you know, there were a lot of interest only loans and, and arms. So like when I, when, when the rates were going up this last six months, I'm like, in hindsight, it's still kind of low, yeah. but yeah. 
I sort of, you know, I wasn't taking into account the fact that the property values are still really high. Yeah, and and, and, I, and that's and that has prevented a lot of people in New Jersey from finding really good opportunities from an investment. You you have to you have to do what we do, right? You need to like research and find the off market properties because because they're not they're you not you, you, you buying an deal. investment property okay. that's listed that's tough. Like I mean, I'm I'm getting calls that like John, you got to get my letters out and get this under contract because there's 12 other offers on this house, right? And they're all over ask, and you know I had to yeah. waive every contingency and give a blood sample. Like, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's just it's still crazy. Yeah. It's not the volume isn't there, but the 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 structure and the immediacy of the deal is still there mm -hmm. from the last two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get me yeah. out of attorney review. Get me under contract. Twelve offers, fifty people at an open house, like. And, and rates are 300, 400 basis points higher. Yeah, I'm like, but, but they've doubled. The only oh, difference is that the rates have doubled. Yeah, it's yeah. the only yeah. difference. So, really, on like a $400,000 loan, you're talking about like a seven dollars $800 change payment. Yeah, six seven hundred dollars Yeah, like, payment. Uh, we it's talked about this, or we talk about this all the time right now in this, in this market, in this environment, that you have people buying $500,000 homes who could have a year ago purchased probably something mm -hmm. like 700 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're looking. You're in a complete different, yeah. you know, uh, uh, level. You're in a you're a complete yeah. different level now because of interest rates. And you know, you know, to kind of bring that back to the lending side of things, because there is so many lending products now, a lot more people can afford to go buy something. Yeah. You know, and and, and that I think has exacerbated yeah. the problem. I think too. what's really important for anyone that's buying, whether it's your primary, your your first time home buyer, or you're someone who's you know looking to get into investing, you just need to you, you need to partner up with a lender. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you have that. I think that's the biggest piece first. Like right. you don't just need the attorney. You don't need the attorney first. You don't you don't need either of us. You don't need yeah. the realtor first. You need the lender first because you should spend a lot. Of, like you said, researching. Yeah, research on what, how to buy, how to invest, whatever. But I want to know before I even start looking. Like, hey, Ryan, these yeah. are this is what I want to get into. How how can you help me get there? Yeah. And what are the products that I can use yeah. to get into investing or buy my first home? And how much money, how much capital do I need to start? Yeah. I don't want to. I you know personally, I wouldn't want to say, okay, I have X amount in my bank account. This is what I could probably afford. Let's just go start making offers, and then the realtor says, hey call Ryan or no, call yeah. Joe yeah. and have a call with them and have a conversation to get your pre-approval so we can, you know, get your offer accepted. Yeah, it would surprise you to, to know that a lot of, no, I know a lot of investors that. don't do that. And, a lot of they, people don't do that. The yeah. first time they speak to a lender is when they Their decide they're going to start. Someone. Yeah, they, they, they contact the agent. The agent, well, you know, you says, hey, before, before we start looking, you yeah. have to get pre-approved. And, and, and instead of sitting with you as the lender saying, hey, what are the options, mm -hmm. or hopefully you as, I know you are, mm -hmm. the lender, whoever they're talking to is proactive to say, hey, these are the different options you have Yeah. to maybe open up their eyes to, okay, maybe I don't need to stay in this lane and just get this type of property or, mm -hmm. oh, I can maybe move into the town I want to move into and not have to sure. take a yeah. hit and move into a town that I don't yeah. want to move into. Well, there's some, so, you know, that's what's great about the last, you know, five, seven years is that with all these new products, a lot of people can can do a lot of different things. You know, like you have, you know, if you're buying a long-term rental, you can qualify just based on like the overall cash flow on the property. You know, right. it's called a debt service coverage ratio, mm -hmm. right? A DSCR loan is what, you know, most people will hear and see what they, they look yep. in on it. Right. Um, which is, which is great. Yeah, that's, that's the majority of, of what you're going to find out there. Um, you know, there are, you know, and, and those lenders that do that type of product, their rates are typically a little bit higher because you're not, you're not qualifying with tax returns and pay stubs and W twos. You're yeah. just, it's just, hey, what's the cash flow? No docs. What's the mortgage payment? All right, what's that ratio look like? As long as it covers at least one to one. Yep. You're good. Now things have changed more recently where lenders are starting to move the needle a little bit on qualifying. So instead of one to one. Now it needs to be one to one point five, or one point one five, or one point one zero, or one point two five. You know, so you need to have a little bit, little bit of profit in there on a monthly basis from a cash flow perspective in order for it to qualify. Um, but you know, most investors 
don't know that. You know, most investors think, well, I don't, I, you know, I, I mean, they're self-employed and I can write off everything and I don't qualify that way because they right. went to Chase or so they went to right. Citibank and they told them they don't qualify because they were trying to do a traditional well, that's, mortgage. And that's been the narrative that people say, oh, you know, I've, I've owned this business for, or I've been 1099 for X amount of time. I can't qualify for a loan yet. Yeah. Still the mentality of that thinking where they're not even opening that conversation yeah. with a lender that there definitely are options for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of people who own businesses, oh, yeah. you know, don't, you know, have, yeah. or there's, you know, they have a startup or something like that that was successful, but they don't have the you know, W-2s and things like that to back right. it up. Yeah. They have to, yeah. but they have the, the money. I mean, they have right. the ambition. Yeah, they, they just don't, they just don't have the, the knowledge, the knowledge or the education can. of what they right. can do. And that's why I think that's the purpose of what we're trying to do here is to give that knowledge so people understand like, hey, even if it's not with us, it's like, well, I listen to this podcast and, you know, yeah. they call their friend of a friend who's a mortgage broker or lender and they're like, hey, I want to start getting into investing. And yeah, it's not Ryan Merritt, but uh, I like, you know, I mean, that's, you a, know like, that's a touchy subject for me on the lending side. No, because, I get it, but no, because it, you're right. That is a natural, you know, uh, course of events, the natural progression in someone's mind to go, oh, I, you know, whoever I used when I bought my house, let me call him, let me call right. him John. And oh, see, because you, worked, hey, because you worked with him, it was a prior relationship. Right. So, and 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 he and he'll turn around and say, "Oh yeah, I totally do that." You know, blah 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 blah, blah. And, and you do an application, and you get all the way down the down the, down the path, and, and you know, it gives you a rate of like, you know, something that's drastically higher mm-hmm. because most residential or retail loan officers only have a very small product mix that mm-hmm. they can offer to their client, right. and typically those products are are. Are through a large, more, larger mortgage aggregator, and they have a lot of. They're they're a lot more susceptible, susceptible to interest rate changes, and, and especially what we've seen now, where interest rates are shot up. You know, their rates are you know significantly higher than what we would be offering or what I would be offering. Um, but the client doesn't know. Right. The client trusts that guy because that guy did his first mortgage, right? And 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 justifiably so. I wouldn't I wouldn't in any way discount that. But that shows you that the client does, hasn't done the research. Other than to just call the guy that they used the mortgage for previously, and that's it. That's well, all, that's I think what, I'm, what I'm saying is like because you are providing the knowledge right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, okay, maybe they don't go with you because it's like Brian from this podcast. But yeah, no, no. they call a friend who's a mortgage yeah. lender, and yeah, maybe they, you know, okay, get it out there. Like if they were Chase or Rocket Mortgage or something like that, like, yeah, you should probably talk to a local. Yeah, the one thing I would tell everybody to do is if you're, lender, if you're really like, considering buying investment properties and, and building a real estate portfolio, do your research up front, talk to people. Don't just go with the first guy that you talk to that seems nice mm-hmm. uh, and seems knowledgeable. That doesn't mean that he is right. You have to price people uh, Just, just you, check yeah. it out. Just go, just take take a take a stroll through the park and talk to a few people and see what's available and see what's out there because you'll begin to see that, that you, all of a sudden you're, the blinders will come off and you'll yeah. see this there is a, a this is more so for your industry, like your area yeah. of the real estate deal, because we're limited in like yeah. you know, I don't have different products for you for purchasing right. it's a legal fee. That's yeah, it. Yeah, it's like look, this is my legal what fee. This is like the fee. range of my legal fee. These are our regulated costs, and and they can only yeah. aside from the mortgage premium, they can only change you know by this yeah. much. Like yeah. you know, so there's not. You're not offering a different product. It's a very small variety of products. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want do you want a do you want an owner's policy or do you want an enhanced owner's policy? Right. right. Those are the two products. Right. And so you're getting an enhanced. Different. You're getting one. And you're, if you're working with me, you're getting an enhanced policy mm-hmm. because you're covered. Yeah. For like things you wouldn't even think you'd be covered for. So. Yeah. Well, and that's also too. This isn't just specific to lending, but when you're buying a certain type of property, like you mentioned the large acreage property the yep. other day or just before someone's buying something and then not even understanding that they can't build what they want to build on it or it's wetlands or, or, or they can't get a well, the, the thing is they do the due diligence and but they don't they no 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 they well they do the due diligence they yeah. think they do the, do, the due they diligence think they do it. that's the key they, they tell you they tell you that we, we completed our due diligence and we can build on it and i'm like well Here's what we're gonna do. We should really get a survey. I know I've been asking you guys to get a survey. Let's get a survey so we can actually find out where the setbacks are. And now you get the survey, and now your property's 20 acres, right? But the survey only has setbacks over here. Mm-hmm. And I say like, wetlands. Well, 
I thought we could build the rap. I was told we could build the rap. Right. That's what my clients told me. That's what someone told them. I don't know who. So what's, a, yeah. can you tell me I what the deal is? And then I look at the survey. Oh, this happens for the title. Oh, yeah. 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 No, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is more title. But, like, but, really, but, but for investors, like you need to do your homework and right. have, you know, a good team, which is why I pushed my clients to get a survey. Because when I got that survey and saw that the setbacks were only over here and not throughout the rest of the property. And I saw there was a conservation easement. There was wetlands. Right. But it is relevant to financing. Them. Well, it is because, well, they're all cash, but let's say they were financing this. Right. From your perspective, I wouldn't be. Uh, clearly, right. you can't build on it. I'm exactly. not giving you money. Well, you in, well originally you thought you could build throughout, so now I can only now I can only lend to you on this portion of, of what you yeah you know, you know it, on, it, right? it, it changes the it changes the structure. You know, I don't have enough time in my day or or my team has enough time to go and do that research for clients. You know, I'll try to help them. And, and you should in any way. Right. But that's, not, that's, not my, that's, that's not my responsibility. That's on the client. That. But to get, yeah. what's funny is that you'll get that client with a company, oh, I'm going to put up, you know, whatever. I'm going to do a development. I'm going to put up five houses. Oh, I'm going to do yeah. all things, you know. Yeah. And, uh, okay, great. You've done all your research? Sure. I have to trust that they've done their their job. Because you won't know until we get closer to closing when right. a survey comes in, when title comes I'm in. I'm going to ask for all these things, right? Yeah. And then I figure it out halfway through and then I've got to be the, I the, the harbinger of death here and, right. and kill this deal. Well, I, so because there was no lending, I'm the harbinger of death. Right. Like we were two days two days before closing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, guys, you're yeah. closing on this. And they're like, what do you mean? Yeah. I'm like, take a look at the survey. We, you know, we, have, we actually have a call today with the engineer because I'm like, you need to explain to us how this affects the deal. Yeah. And I want you to delineate and tell me, highlight everything I can't build on right now. I know just from looking at well, it. Yeah, and then ultimately, that changes the value. Well, that's what we're discussing. Right, so right, now the seller's pushing us close, 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 and I'm like, no, dude, hold on, nah. wait a minute, yeah, pump the brakes. Yeah. And then the seller who isn't represented, terrible decision. Yeah, terrible decision. You should have an attorney. Up, in my opinion, if you're, in, especially in North Jersey, like you should really have an attorney. Is this somebody who's ever done development before? Probably not. buyer or seller. Buyer. Buyer, uh, no. Yeah, see that, no. that, that see, that's the challenge there. Like one of the one of the questions. Or at least I don't think so. This is the first deal I have with them and I don't yeah. know. And, and it's fine. Like they're they're savvy enough to understand that I'm telling them we can't yeah. close. Yeah. And then they're savvy enough to come back to me and say, Well, this changes our offer. I'm like, one hundred percent. Yeah. And we're we're although we're out of our contingencies, we're not because we don't, you know, have those automatic waivers and the seller's pushing me saying, Well, we're beyond our closing date, you're out of all your contingencies, and I'm like, No, yeah, no, sorry. no. Yeah. Go back to my letter. You need to send me a notice properly. Send me a, a letter, a notice to cure, if you want us to cure and close and you know whatnot, whatever. So we're still still well within our contingencies yeah. to just kill this deal, even though like look, my client shelled out a really good amount of money to do a twenty acre survey, but you know what? That yeah. money investment wise is way better than getting into a property that you can't you yeah, can only yeah, build yeah, on yeah, one third. Yeah, yeah, then you lose money trying to dump it. Yeah, I mean the, the one the one takeaway for for people. I think should be, you know, do, do your research up front. You don't necessarily need to pay a course. You don't need to pay for some fancy schmancy TikTok influencer guy who's got a course, right? I mean, there's probably some value in there, but that value is something that you can find pretty easily, I would think, on the internet and probably not cost you. Right. Um, second thing is to understand what your exit strategy is going to be. Like, where, you know, am I going to buy and hold this? Am I going to, am I going to flip it? Am I, you know? Um, you know, are you trying to really build a real estate portfolio and then, you know, be conscientious about the portfolio that you're beginning to build for yourself, right? Like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to concentrate on four family and three family and two family and one family and, and, and do that method. I mean, there's so many different methods, but, um, that ultimately helps me determine what kind of product is available for you to be able to finance what you're trying to do, because there's, that's, that's the challenge right now. When you go to, when you go to a lender or you go to a bank, they have one product, but they have one Set of guidelines. Yeah, you, you have different options. For yeah, them, that's yeah. The whole. Like for me, as as a commercial loan broker, like I have, where I, you know, I have thirty different banks that I work with. I can literally find. It may, it may not be the answer that you want, but I can literally find you the, the the financing that you need to do what you need to do. So, so having access to somebody like me and my team makes all the difference in the world for an investor because I give you the options to know, like, oh, I can afford this. I can get this. This is what's going to cost me. And you kind of know. All right. This is what I need to do to be able to get this done. Whereas when you just go to that guy at, at the local bank, you're just getting that one product or that one set of guidelines. And if you don't fall into that box, 
keeps it year round. Yeah, so, so yeah, do the research. It's important to do the research up front, and, and I know that that's obvious and canned and, and, and sort of cliche, but you know, it, it's it really is important to do that up front. Well, do the research and, and, and speak to and speak and speak to people. Yeah, I think and talk to people, get referrals from yeah. people. You know, talk to your attorneys, talk to your you know, talk to your title people, talk to your realtors, talk to talk to those people, and they'll generally get you in, in touch with the right people. Um, you know, if you're if you're looking to invest, residential agents and residential loan officers may not be the right place to go because they may not have the tools available to help you. But it's certainly a good starting point. I get a lot of business from from realtors, and I get a lot of business from from loan officers because they don't know where to do. They don't know what to do, where to go. Uh, put their, put their clients in touch with you, and yeah, then yeah. the client becomes educated. Yeah, and that's why I think for a lot of us, getting the client before the deal, the offer is even made, is the best time to get the clients because we can educate them. Right, yeah. that's the goal here: educate the consumer, because once the consumer knows and has a very transparent picture of. The structure of a deal, whether it's residential or commercial, yeah, they're better for it. They I love doing it. the consultations. Me too. I love it. And I think that's why we always have to do it's this. A, it's a, so it's a you have to it's a balancing act because it it's, it's a non yeah. you know uh, money generating activity. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have to be careful about about spending my entire day just chit chatting with people. But you know, you need to make money doing it too. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you're serious about doing it and, and you're engaged, I'm engaged to help you get absolutely. Up to and that's and that's. Fun. You know, and, and with all the different, having somebody like me in your corner with all the products that we have available. You know, when I say products, I don't necessarily mean there's a specific loan for you, like a BSCR loan or a fix and flip loan or, you know, commercial loan, bridge loans. I mean, there's so many different products that can fit. It's tough to hone in on one specific program and say, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna do this. I can give you five of them and say, hey, listen, you can do this, 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 and this. This one's gonna, you know, and, and give you all the pros and cons of each one. Yeah. I had somebody in there said that we should talk about those spe very specific products. Yeah, like what's the SCR? Yes, what's the fix and flip yeah. loan? What's, uh, what's because this, again, this is just a general overview of yeah, what yeah. people need to yeah. to understand to really yeah. begin the process. Yeah. And as you get deeper into this podcast, deeper into investing, deeper into real estate, we're going to get deeper into those. Topics. Yeah, the one thing I probably should have done today was kind of talk about what you know what it really takes to start. To really start like you do an application like i get the deal experience but again we can go but those are yeah. more right. deeper dives right. into Next things time. like hey the process yeah. Of, so yeah Next time. but i think this was a good general overview for people who are looking to get into investing or get into buying their first property yeah and yeah. understanding that hey having a lender on my side is extremely beneficial from an educational standpoint before I go out there and start exactly. going on Zillow truly right. on realtor.com and looking for properties yeah. with the agent. So call by Merit. That's right. <laughs> call by Merit. He's a good lender, but a better person. Oh, who'd be better? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think, uh, that's a wrap. Right.